And I'm eternally grateful for, for, the, for those invitations to participate in the telling of an extraordinary story um, that possibly may never be forgiven, mustn't be forgotten, and probably will never be fully understood. But uh, I'm, I'm, I've been very privileged to be invited to voice. Uh, if, if, you, if, you, if you look at some of the th many threads in the work that I do, one of the threads is certainly um, the memory of the Holocaust. And, and I, as a storyteller and as an actor, perpetuating that memory in the light of experiences that I've had. And when you kindly invited me to, uh, when I was kindly invited to join this extraordinary project, um, it immediately connected to a previously existing thread, if you like. We have filmed terrible things, but then surely it, I think it's perhaps our, our, our duty, but our calling to say to a generation of viewers, I'm sorry boys and girls, but this did happen. Yeah. And it's, it, it, uh, it's, I think, capturing that and handing it to the audience in some ways has its triumphs as well. And, and in order to, to show the boys and girls of today what we are capable of, we'll have its terrible, tragic, dark days. And we film them as storytellers. The Mossad thread of the story is thrilling in the, 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 the hidden monster, complacent hidden monster reflecting over the, over the murders, is found, is captured, and is made to stand up and say, yes, I did it. That's the important thing. This is going to be a thrilling picture because it, it is redemptive and it's triumphant. Um, uh, it, 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 it is the story of the capturing and bringing to justice of a monster and honouring the hallowed memory of all that monster's victims. That in itself is a triumph. Also, the search for him, the hunt for him, the preparation, the disguises, the subterfuge involved, the, the risks, the terrible risks involved in Buenos Aires at that time, um, the involvement of Ben-Gurion, of, 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 of Israel. Uh, all of this is absolutely thrilling. My corner of it comes from my own experience, but I am a colour on a canvas that is ultimately redemptive and thrilling and very exciting and beautiful as a film. Every one of us has a dr dramatic function in this film, and I think every one of us, thanks to the casting of the film, the casting process, is very secure in that dramatic function. What do I need to do in this film to help, to help the bigger picture? Working with my director has been an absolute joy because I think that, you know, occasionally one has a, a sympathetic ear and voice and there's a confluence of ideas and motives and it's, it's, it's very, very rare and wonderful. Wonderful. Hey, Vale here. Now, hundreds of movies come out every year, but very few are hits. Here are America's top five highest grossing movies, adjusted for inflation, according to box office Mojo. Okay, number one, Gone with the Wind. Released in 1939, it's one of the world's first genuine blockbusters, with a grand total of 1,786,074,500 dollars. Number two, Star Wars from 1977, the George Lucas space opera that launched a thousand action figures and almost as many sequels and prequels, still reigns supreme in the Star Wars universe with a total take of 1,574,577,200 dollars. Number three, The Sound of Music from 1965, The Hills Are Alive, with the sound of 1,258,951,900 dollars in domestic ticket sales. Number four, 
E.T. The Extraterrestrial. The biggest movies of 1982 is also the fourth biggest movies of all time with a grand total of 1,253,992,300 dollars. Number five, Titanic from 1997. James Cameron's award-winning film took in 1,197,000 $594,300 during its theatrical run. So, do you think that it's valid that these films made that much money? Let me know in the comments below. See ya!